Our bread of life can be found in Matthew 27, verses 55 through 56. And with this word, let us begin our Parents' Day, Mother's Day, Lord's Day worship. Today is the second Lord's Day in May, and it is also Parents' Lord's Day, and of course, Mother's Day as celebrated here in America. On this day, may we thank our parents and especially our mothers, for raising us both, not only in the world, but in the church. This is the day that we thank our mothers. And throughout our lives, are not our parents there for us? The mother's love, it embraces us, it comforts us. So may we be thankful on this day Children do not know the hearts of their mothers who pray for them with tears and suffer greatly alone in their hearts for their children. And children, they do not remember the grace upon grace given to them and the devotion given to them by their mothers who raised them. But instead, there are children who complain and get annoyed with just the few things that were not able to be provided to them from their mothers. So when do the children understand their mother's heart? It is when the children are all grown up and they get married and have a child who begins to act just like you, a child who looks just like you. And then your heart begins to ache because of that child, and that is when you understand the feeling of your mother. When you become a parent, that is when you understand the heart of your mother who raised you. to our children of faith at this time. Please look at your mothers who are wearing the carnations on their tops, whether they are at the side of you, behind you, in front of you. Never forget that they helped you bring you to this point in your life today. It was through their tears and ceaseless prayers that this happened. So may we never stop praying for them. And may we never forget the mother's love that they have for us. In today's scripture reading, we read that when Jesus took upon our sins and died upon the cross, there were devoted women who stood by him, who did not leave as he he was on the cross. But we know that all of Jesus' disciples, they fled. Who was the only one who remained? It was only the disciple John. And who else? It was four women who also did not flee, but stood below the cross of Jesus. And these women are mentioned in our scripture reading and in the following verses. Matthew 27, 56 says, Among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Here we see that four women are here underneath the cross of Jesus. And it also speaks about the mother of the sons, the mother 
of James and John, specifically the Bible says mother. And also in Mark 15, verse 40, the Bible says, there were also some women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Less and Joseph, and Salome. This is what is described in the Bible. And also in John 19, verse 25, it reads, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. This is his mother, Mary. And his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. While Mary Magdalene's name is consistently mentioned in these scriptures, the other woman's identities are changed according to the various verses recorded in the Bible. We see in Matthew 27, verse 56, it says, Mary, mother of James and Joseph, or Joseph, and in Mark 15, 40, it also says this, and in John, 1925, it says, Mary, wife of Clopas. And, but these are all the same woman. Another verse says mother, another one says wife. And in Matthew 27, 56, it says, mother of the sons of Zebedee. And in Mark 15, 40, it specifically records the name Salom. And in John 19, verse 25, it says his mother's sister, which is Mary's sisters, which was Jesus's aunt. But these are referring to all the same four women. Here in John 19.25, who is Clopas? It says, wife of Clopas. Clopas was one of the two disciples who went down to Emmaus after Jesus was crucified on the cross. He was one of the two disciples that went down to Emmaus. And his wife was the one who was standing below the cross when Jesus was crucified. So although Clopas was not one of the 12 disciples, he was one of the, dis of the 70 disciples of Jesus Christ. In Luke 24, verses 13 through 14, the Bible says, And behold, Two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place. And then it continues in another verse, and it speaks of one of the disciples. And this disciple was Cleopas, Clopas. And this is found in Luke 24, 18. It says, one of them named Clopas answered and said to him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? He was speaking of the crucifixion. He could not recognized the resurrected Christ. That is why he questioned Jesus when he resurrected. And in Luke 24, 33, we see that Clopas and another disciple met the risen Lord and went up to Jerusalem and became dedicated to the will of Jesus after Jesus opened the scriptures to Clopas and Clopas recognized who he was. 
So he repented, and he once again began to do the works of Christ. Why then did the resurrected Lord, after being crucified on the cross, among all the disciples, why did he appear before Clopas, especially while Clopas was disappointed and traveling down to Emmaus? It was not because of Clopas's faith, but whose faith? It was because of his wife, who stood below the cross until the very end as Jesus was being crucified. Because of Clopas's wife's faith, because of her faith, the Lord restored her husband, Clopas, and raised him up again to live a life of faith. However, today's scripture reading also refers to this woman, the wife of Clopas, as Mary, mother of James and Joseph. There is no lie inside the Bible, and there is always a mate. So we see that the wife of Clopas was also Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. She was that great wife and great mother of this family. And why was she great? Because she held on to the cross till the end. And so the Bible records her of having great faith. And because of her, her husband Clopas is mentioned as well as her two sons, James and Joseph. And I believe her act of faith is a reflection upon our mothers today who are sitting here with carnations pinned to their tops. Even though it is not recorded in the Bible, there are many wives who raised up their husbands, who raised up their children through their tears of faith. And the tears of a wife who prays for their family, for their husband, who may at times find their family falling in this world, face difficult times. The tears of this wife and this mother who prays for her children. They will be the ones who walk upright in the way of the word. And they will live a righteous path of life. And through the difficulties, it is the mother's prayers. It is the mother's prayers who helps them, who holds on to them, and builds up the children of faith in the church. Our husbands, our children, even though they may not be aware of this all the time, this is the day to remember. So may we remember the tears of our mothers, our wives, and may our Father God bless them. And Jesus, he did not forget the tearful cries of his mother, Mary. Even during the pain of torture, the pain of death, as his body was being ripped apart, Jesus never forgot to show filial piety. Though Jesus was the creator God, he humbled himself to show his mother his humility, his humbleness. And on the cross, among the seven messages spoken by Jesus on the cross, what was the third message? He, he spoke for his mother, on behalf of his mother, on John 19, 
26 through 27. This verse tells us what Jesus said about his mother. In John 19, 26 through 27, it says, When Jesus then saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own household. So what image is this? Jesus Christ is dying before his beloved mother, Mary. So what is he doing before he dies? He is be being a dutiful son, even till his dying breath, where he bestows the responsibility of the care of his mother to his disciple, John. Why? So that before Jesus leaves this earth, he knows that his mother is taken care of. Even though he is going to die, he does not want his mother to suffer, but he wants his beloved disciple John to take care of her. And although the Apostle Paul did not marry, he did not have any biological children or a biological wife. The Bible tells us that he had spiritual sons of faith. 1 Timothy 1 verse 2 says, To Timothy, my true child in the faith. This is what Paul is saying about Timothy, his spiritual son. And in Titus 1 verse 4, it says, To Titus, my true child in a common faith. This is speaking of his spiritual son, Titus. We know Titus was not Paul's real son. However, the Bible mentions that Paul addressed these men as his spiritual sons, and he also addressed a certain woman as his mother, even though she was not his biological mother. Who was this? It was Rufus's mother. Paul believed this woman to be his spiritual mother. So he had spiritual sons and also a spiritual mother. And this is recalled in Romans 16, 13. This is Paul's confession. He says, Greet Rufus, a choice man in the Lord, also his mother and mine. So he's calling Rufus's mother also his mother. This means that Rufus's mother became Paul's spiritual mother. And why? She must have had a profound impact upon Paul's ministry to call Rufus's mother my mother. How great was this woman? Even though Paul had a physical mother, he recognized his spiritual mother. She was one who did the work of God, the work of Christ, praying for Paul. So here then, who is Rufus's father. He had a great spiritual mother, so who was Rufus's father? It is Simon of Cyrene, the only man who helped carry Jesus' heavy cross to Golgotha. And carrying that heavy cross for Jesus, he must have fallen many times, climbing the hill to the place of the skull, helping Jesus carry the cross. 
This is recorded in Mark 15, 21. They pressed into service a passerby coming from the country, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. So this shows that Simon of Cyrene is Rufus's father. And we see this in Mark 15, 21. In other words, by the actions of Simon of Cyrene, who took up the cross of Jesus Christ and became drenched in our Lord's atoning blood, Simon of Cyrene's wife and his son Rufus became men of the gospel. And later, this woman, Simon of Cyrene's wife, called Rufus's mother, also had a great role. And her role was ministering to Apostle Paul as his spiritual mother who cared for him and prayed for him. This woman was recorded in the Bible as such a great woman of faith. But that is not all. We know that the first location that sparked the early church movement was the upper room of John Mark. So here, the early church was created. And this is the place of the Last Supper where Jesus made the new covenant with his precious blood. The upper room of John Mark. And after Jesus' resurrection and ascension, Matthias was selected as the disciple who took the place of the betrayer, Judas Iscariot. And this upper room was also the place where the Holy Spirit descended, starting the building of the early church. The tongues of fire of the Holy Spirit descended here in the upper room of John Mark. But how does the Bible describe this important place? Yes, the Bible calls it the upper room of John Mark. But the Bible describes it also as this. And we must know this as it is Mother's Day. In Acts 12, verse 12, this is what the Bible says about this important place. It says, and when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary the mother of John, who was also called Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. So whose house? It is the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was called Mark. So the Bible is not calling this place the upper room of John Mark, but the house of Mary. People... We call it John Mark's upper room. But God is telling us no. This is the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark. God recognizes the woman of faith who built up this house of faith. And that is why Acts 12.12 12 recognizes this home as the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark. Although John Mark did give up and dedicate this upper room, which marked an important milestone in redemptive history, the foundation for the birth of the early church behind it was the religious teachings and tearful prayers of John Mark's mother, Mary. That is why God recognizes it as the house of Mary.
God always recognizes the people of faith. And dear beloved saints who are sitting here right now, do you know where the first place, the first home is, where every human being begins their life on earth? Where is your first home? It is in the womb of your mother. The first food that we ever ate, do you know where it came from? It came from your mother inside of her through her umbilical cord. And the spiritual source of every human being is, of course, our Heavenly Father. But every human begins their time on earth in the womb of their mother inside of her. Today, on this Lord's Day, on this Mother's Day, we can do nothing but give thanks from the bottom of our hearts to our mothers. And today, on this Parents' Lord's Day, on this Mother's Day, be sure to tell your mother how much you appreciate them and love them. All day, you should remember the love that they have for you. And honoring your parents is the starting point in learning how to truly honor your Father God who is in heaven. Because we have to understand that if you cannot honor and love your parents, then how can we honor and love our Father God? How can we love Him if we do not love our parents? This is something that we must understand. And we all want to do well and prosper on this earth. So how do we do this? The Bible tells us. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Let's find it together and read it. It is found in the New Testament in the back of your Bibles, page 315. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. In this world, if you want to do well, there is one thing you must do. And the Bible tells us this in Ephesians 6, 1, 2, 3. Let us read it together. Ready? Begin. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Amen. So God says to do what? Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise that you will do well and you will live long. So do this and God will take care of your lives. On this Mother's Day, in the month of the family, may the love of the parent and child be restored through this word. And as it says in Jeremiah 31, verse 1, May the God of all families reign in our hearts today on this holy Lord's Day. I bless us upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is a commandment that comes with the promise that it may be well with us and that we may live long. 
So on this Parents Lord's Day, on this Mother's Day, as we began our lives in the wombs of our mothers, as they care for us through faithful tears, but did we not repay them with complaints, with grumblings, and have we not caused our mother's pain? At this time, may we be forgiven, and may we understand the hearts of our mothers. And through the love of our mothers, we pray that we will understand the love of our Father God. And throughout this day, may we show our physical mothers our love. May we be thankful for them. And may we never forget the heart of our mothers. And may we live as faithful children, living not only to please our mother, but also our Father God. And for those who are seated here today, for all the mothers and parents that are here, may you repay them for the hard work, dedication, love, and tears that they shed for their children. May you bless them. May you comfort them. And may there be happiness and peace in their lives. May their children be dedicated in being loving children of faith. We believe in this and we pray in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give glory to God.